Thread the Needle is a great shoulder opener um, and a lovely twist and stretch for the spine. I'm going to give you options and modifications, so if you could bring a block that would be awesome, um, but enjoy. I'm hoping that you'll leave with lots of different options and variations that you can try out. For thread the needle, you want to start on all fours. So just make sure that your wrists are stacked underneath your shoulders. But the important one is knees stacked underneath hips, because this position in the lower body is going to stay the same while our arms wrap under and do all sorts of other things. So just make sure that you've got that shape. And you might take a couple of cat cows here just to stretch out a little through the spine. So lowering the belly down, rolling the shoulders back, lifting the head and then pressing the spine up towards the ceiling. And then just come back through a neutral spine. We're gonna lift that right arm all the way up. So reach it high, reach the fingertips up. And then this right arm is gonna slide underneath the left, sliding all the way through so that your right shoulder comes down to the mat and the right side of your head. Now the weight is in the shoulder. So even though your head is pressing down into the mat, the real weight of your body is in this shoulder. So just make sure that you can kind of lift your head and you can feel that the weight's pressing down through that shoulder. Now from here, you might snuggle your arm through a little further. You make sure that the hips stay above the knees. So you're keeping those hips above the knees. Almost like in our puppy pose, like very, very similar um, position here. Can you also, try and press the weight in the lower body back over to the right hand side. So this right arm is coming over to the left, the top of our body is twisting, but can you press weight into the right side of the hip, of the leg? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's our basic thread the needle. We're pressing down through this left hand to roll the left shoulder back. And then you could stretch this arm overhead. We'll find a few more variations in a moment, but let's just take it to the other side. So just bringing yourself up by pressing that left hand into the mat, reaching that right arm all the way back up, and then placing it down. Let me just come over to the other side so that I can show you. But we're just gonna do that on the other side. So, find that neutral spine, make sure that those knees are stacked under hips, lift that left arm, reach it all the way up. And then we're going to send the left hand underneath the right arm. Send it as far as you can to really find that twist. Remember, we're bringing that shoulder down in the side of the head, but the weight is in the shoulder. We're pressing down through that right hand to roll that right shoulder back. And then we're pressing the weight over to the left hand side of the lower body. Yes, nice. So really pressing through that hand, rolling the shoulder back, and then maybe taking your right arm overhead. So stretching that hand out, and that kind of allows you to open up a little more to the right hand side. Can you keep shifting that weight in the lower body over to the left? Very nice. Okay, bring that right hand back, press it into the floor, reach that left arm all the way up, and then bring it back down. So let's just take it to the other side and just find a couple more variations. So we're, these are kind of further variations to increase the stretch. We're then going to use a block for a couple of modifications. So a couple more here. Make sure you're stacked again in that all fours position. Lift that right arm all the way up and then send that right hand underneath your left arm, bringing that shoulder, that head to the ground. Now before we sent that left arm overhead, but you could also reach that left arm up towards the ceiling, turn the palm back behind you, and then start to thread that arm over. So you're aiming to reach the right thigh or the right side of the hip. Yeah, can you press that weight still in the lower body over to the right? So this hopefully is helping you to open up a little more to the left. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, so gently unravel that hand, press it back down, reach your right arm all the way up and bring it back down. And so like all of these different variations that we're doing, is so that when you're flowing through stuff in your own practice, you've got some different variations that you can do because we've all got different bodies, we've all got different things going on <laughs> um, and some will suit others, some will suit ourselves. Um, let's just roll this on the other side. So lifting that left arm all the way up, reach it high 
and then bring it all the way under that right arm. Coming down to the shoulder, side of the head, and then maybe we send that right arm up towards the ceiling, we turn the palm back behind us, and then thread that arm over to the left hand side of the hip, maybe touching the thigh, roll that right shoulder back. And you're kind of noticing if this is the one that you're wanting to go to. The reason is because it's helping you to open a little more, to get a little further into that twist, right? If it's feeling anything other than that, it's feeling kind of strenuous or maybe straining on the neck or anything like that, just come back to another variation. It's kind of wherever your body wants to go. And then gently thread that right arm, press it back down, lift that left arm high and then come back down. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to use the blocks, the block even, <laughs> there is only one here, um, for a couple of variations. And so this is, again, depending on different bodies and what your body's doing, some of these might feel great, some of these not so good. So the first one, I'm going to use my block between my thighs. Now, because of the width of my block, I'm going to feed it through kind of lengthways because I can still keep my knees underneath my hips. It might be that you have it on the thinnest width, but you want to make sure that your knees are stacked underneath your hips. So kind of whatever that block distance is for you. And what this is going to help with is when we're talking about keeping that weight even in the hips. So when we come down, we're taking the right arm up, up, bringing it under, we have that tendency to swing the hips over to the left because that's the way that we're going and this can really help to keep them stable. Um, if also, if you're getting any knee pain or anything when you're doing this, it can help um, clinging the thighs around this block. It can kind of help to distribute the weight a little bit differently. So give it a try. It might be for you. It might not be. Then the other way that we're going to use the block um, is for your shoulder to come down to. So if it is not feeling super comfy bringing that shoulder down, you might use a block. Now, I would probably recommend something more comfy than a block. So like a bolster if you've got one or a cushion, a kind of relatively hard but soft cushion because I find this a bit hard for my shoulder. But let me just show you how you could use this. I'll just switch over to the other side. So. We're back in that all fours position. We're lifting that left arm all the way up. And then as we sweep this left arm through, we want to position this block so that that's where the shoulder lands. So I'm going to do mine lengthways in terms of up the mat because it gives a little more um, softness, I feel. And then wherever your shoulder lands, it kind of just gives you a little bit of extra height. And you might fiddle around with it to find something that feels a little better for you. Like I said, if you've got a cushion or something a little bit softer that doesn't have such hard edges, then I would recommend because I find a block a little bit tough on the shoulder. But it's a nice kind of way if you're really struggling to get that shoulder to the floor. And then the final one, if all of it feels quite a lot in the lower body, because obviously we're keeping that, those hips up, like in our puppy pose, you could bring your knees wide and find a child's pose. So you're kind of, you're being a little more restorative with the lower body than kind of active keeping it up. And then feed each arm underneath and sit your bum back towards your heels. So that's another option as well. <laughs> a lot of options in there but hopefully it means that when you do go and play around either in kind of full practices that other people are doing um, or any of mine and actually you choose a different variation because it feels better for your body then amazing that's the hope <laughs> thanks for watching subscribe if you like what i'm doing um, and have a wonderful day the most wonderful ever